Senator Tim Scott officially announcing his run for presidency in North Charleston, South Carolina, as he put it. He wanted everybody to know what his hometown was. And you see uh, from earlier, Francis uh, Scott with him, that's his mom. She was one of the first people he brought out on stage. It was almost an hour of hearing from him, and there were some technical difficulties along the way, too. At one point, we thought our audio and all technical stuff had gone down here in the studio as I was moving from the Faulkner Focus to Outnumbered's couch a few minutes ago, but it was him, and he kept trying all these different microphones to see if anybody could pick up the sound of his voice. I mean, it got very, very quiet from there in North Charleston, South Carolina, and then uh, more of his rousing speech. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here with my co-hosts Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us, Fox News contributor and former State Department spokesperson Marie Harf and Fox News contributor and former Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz. Kaylee, almost an hour of that. There were some stops and starts. He had people coming up with him. He wanted people to see his mother with a long-term family friend to show that the racial divide can be united. The mics went out, they came back on. He never lost a beat screaming, let's go. Yeah, what a powerful, authentic, unifying voice in our country. And I say in our country because you don't hear this message on the left, you don't hear this message on the right. It was optimistic. You hear tenors of faith throughout other candidates, but that's the centrality of his message. How beautiful were his words. My grandfather chose patriotism over pity. I'm living proof that America is the land of opportunity, not the land of oppression. What we just heard, we need to have compassion for those who disagree with us. Contrast that with Joe Biden. The vaccinated have a right to be angry at the unvaccinated. If you op oppose Georgia voting laws, you're a segregationist. Uh, MAGA Republicans are clear and present danger. They're a threat to our democracy. That message beats Joe Biden. What you just saw beats Joe Biden any day of the week without trying. I believe when he said, can somebody say an amen? There were a whole lot of people around this country saying, amen, Senator <laughs> Tim Scott. Uh, Jason Chaffetz, a former oversight chairman, you know Senator Tim Scott, I've known him for years. What was going through your mind? I was watching you watch that. I'm just so proud of Tim Scott. I knew him when he got elected to the House of Representatives. We served there. Then he ran for the Senate. He's breaking all kinds of barriers. He's the real deal. I bet I've been to dinner with him, I don't know, 100 plus times. Uh, he, he, this is core to who he is. His belief in God, his belief in the Bible, his belief in Jesus Christ, when he starts talking about those things, he's doing that from memory. He does that because he knows that to his core, but he's an inspirational figure. You go back and read his book, you about, hear about his history, his, his accident as a, as a teenager that he had to recover from. I mean, he's, he's sold insurance, he worked at Amway. That guy has, has pulled himself up by the bootstraps and become a 10-year senator, I think he, his message resonates. I do think this is one of the biggest threats to the Democratic message, I believe that. And I think he is, he is a messenger that carries one of hope and vision like Reagan did. Uh, a redemption story, America, you're yeah. talking about his book. I recently read that. Um, and so, as he said to this audience, Jason, he said, look, a lot of you already know the story. I'm gonna tell it again. Right. And he told it like he'd never told it before. And even you were saying, I've heard this before, but I don't know, it's got a little <laughs> something on it. Um, but that last part that you just said about Democrats being worried, I have to say, Marie, I, I'm a little shocked that, that this wasn't gamed out in terms of the Biden research when they toyed with New Hampshire to put South Carolina first. Not only do you take on two Republican declared candidates, but you take on a black man in the South who has a lot of support based on the politically neutral things that he says, like loving God, loving country, service, military service those types of things that tend to patriotically unite us all. Uh, do you think that was a mistake? I mean, your, your side is bleeding black vote right now, 90 to 58 percent in the last Fox News polling. I don't think the question is whether Tim Scott can beat Joe Biden. That was a remarkable speech. That was a remarkable event. When he talked about uh, talking to people we disagree with, right, the question isn't whether he can beat Joe Biden. The question is whether he can beat Donald Trump. That is a very different message than you get from the front runner by far. I mean, the front runner in the Republican Party is Donald Trump in every single poll by double digits. 
Tim Scott has a great story. He's been building support quietly, especially among his Senate and House colleagues. He doesn't have great name recognition, right? So from here, I think he's going to Iowa. He's going to New Hampshire. He's mm -hmm. trying to build up his, his ground game in those early states. But the question for me is whether in today's Republican Party, which I am certainly not an expert on, right? Jason is much more of an expert on that than I am. I, I am doubtful that he can break through in a party that still feels like they want the red meat from Donald Trump and not this. I mean, we'll see Harris in the polls that come after this announcement, but I'm doubtful about that uh, at this moment in the Republican Party. Do you really want to take a total dodge, though, on, on the idea on that, that your candidate <laughs> moved up a primary and, and it's just got a lot tougher? Should this play out? So I think... Look, the Democratic primary calendar is a very sort of inside D.C. baseball game well, here. Well, no doubt. I think that Joe Biden, you know, South Carolina better represents the broader coalition of Democratic voters across the country. Iowa, I think, gave up its ability to be the first in the nation after last time. But I also think New Hampshire is an incredibly important state for Democrats. They we do, have constantly too. Joe Biden's name's them. not on the ballot right now. And we have constantly outperformed national Democrats there in right. every election cycle. So we can't forget about New Hampshire, Harris. Uh, before I come to you, Emily, I, I want to go to this because I can't wait to get you react to this. The, the <clears throat> senator talked about his family and particularly about his grandfather and some of the nuggets of wisdom that he got. Watch this. My grandfather lived long enough to watch his grandson pick out a seat in Congress. That's, that's the evolution of the country we live in. My family went from cotton to Congress in his lifetime. Uh, he went on to say that from a broken man to a broken home, Look at where he has gotten. I mean, it was just such an amazing section there. Some of it not new, but some of it new. I was riveted that entire time, Harris, and I have to say, what a breath of fresh air Senator Scott is. What a, a cool drink of water on a hot summer day that speech was. The intellect, the faith-filled tenor, the compelling life story that shows the fact that he has absolutely overcame, overcome adversity and circumstances that statistically might, might brand him a victim. But as he said multiple times, not how he was raised. He was a victor in that household and now standing before us as a senator and a presidential candidate. Um, I'm struck as well, X's and O's, um, underscoring what Marie said earlier. So we understand he has this impressive war chest, right? $22 million. He's yeah. been quietly garnering support, Senator Thune and more. Mm -hmm. But nationally pulling at about 2%. There's really not a lot of national recognition. And I note, as someone who's been respecting him and enjoying his presence, both in person um, at events, you know, that we've spoken at together and the like, just what an amazing guy he is. What a stand-up conservative, a consistent man of God. My point is, um, that will that message resonate? The Reagan conservatism is the party, will they respond to that versus the populism? And he's so, not gonna come out swinging. He's going to come out gently, firmly, strongly representing those ideals. He says, my brand of conservatism. So the question remains for the primaries, right. the response. But I, for one, think that is, again, a breath of fresh air. So that is so interesting because, Jason, uh, there has been criticism that even Ronald Reagan couldn't win today in politics. Mm -hmm. Um, to Marie's point, I actually agree with her. There's two races here. One is the, the primary. You know, to, Donald Trump is way, way out in front. It feels like he's lapping people at this point. He is lapping people. Yeah. But, but, but <laughs> to, yeah, get the, to, to get the nomination is, I mean, you really have to run the gauntlet. It's a very tough, difficult thing to do. Um, can somebody like Tim Scott break through who doesn't have the name, type of name recognition? I think this is who the Republican Party wants to be. Can they actually get there? I, oh, I, interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if he can get there. I, I don't know, Kaylee. I don't know if there's a personality that the party wants to be. I think they want to win. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Look, President Trump has a 36.9 percent lead in real clear politics. That that is enormous. I mean, that's, that's double, the lead. double, double, that's double, double. That's not the percentage that he. Right. I mean, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the, the lead. lead. Yes. I mean, right. there's no denying that Donald Trump is the front runner right now. No denying that. However, there are some intangibles here. Scott's campaign would tell you we're banking on debate night. 20 million viewers here on the Fox News Channel. We will likely have. Does Trump show up for that? I think he does. I think he does show up. My former boss never spoiled from a fight. He will show up. <laughs> to the point of fighting, however, Tim Scott 
and Ron DeSantis will make the case about electability. Tim Scott's team saying fighting is good, but winning is better. They're going to make that case on a debate stage. Mm -hmm. We can win a general election. Um, and then finally, they'll say we're going to win state by state. You know, DeSantis's team is saying I have 37 congressional endorsements in Iowa. That's more than Ted Cruz that had 13. Tim Scott saying I'm going to pick up South Carolina. This is my home state. Can you do it? It's a heavy lift against Donald Trump. These are their arguments. All right. Well, I feel like it's been going for quite some time <laughs> and it picks up. Now, potentially DeSantis also in the next few days will declare we don't know exactly. There are others on that list. We'll cover it all. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.